Good evening everyone, it's been a little while since we've done a video, so uh, we thought we'd do one on this old uh, Pi Telecom, uh, Pi Cambridge FM10B, uh, here we ha have on the bench set tonight. This is uh, 1966, I believe, or 65, era equipment, uh, back in the early days when uh, mobile radios really starting to become a thing. Um, so... I'll just run through a few little items that are different from modern stuff. We have uh, our Squelch Control, which everybody's familiar with. And then next thing over we have is the uh, on-off switch, or the on-off standby switch. Uh, and the the point of this is uh, you can put it on receive only, and uh, on receive only it drew a lot less current than if it was on standby, because it has a tube transmitter and, and a uh, solid state receiver so uh, interesting uh, stuff we have uh, the channel change and the volume control so pretty standard things there and the uh, microphone here on the side with the push to talk on the top of the mic and uh, yeah pretty classic pretty classic stuff in the front here we have the uh, somebody's made this uh, mobile radio um, from a trunk mount, it was intended to be in your trunk, into a base station. They mounted the control head on top of the radio and the speaker and everything else. Uh, traditionally, this would have been mounted in the back of your car. And uh, the uh, the big box here would be in the trunk, and the the rest of it would be in the, uh, in the front of your car here. Let's see if we can find the... Yes, here is a picture. So yeah, here's a uh, concept in the manual of how to mount this thing in your car. And uh, I would say that the uh, car of the day would have been uh, a lot larger than the car of today. So then it would be quite a, uh, quite a setup. So what we'll do is we'll go through uh, the rig a little bit. Uh, this does operate. I've uh, used it on the air and I will have a little video at the end of uh, it in operation. So uh, right now we'll just uh, peel the top off here. I've already taken the liberty of loosening off everything. And we'll have a look inside. So we get the uh, transmitter section all here, which is the vacuum tube section. And then the receiver is actually underneath. There's a uh, solid state boards underneath there. And then we have the audio section and the high voltage converter section for the high voltage for the tubes when you go on transmit. Uh, this is crystal controlled, so we have the receive crystals on either side of this little uh, motor here. And this is the Letix motor that uh, ch changes the channels when you change uh, frequencies on the uh, channel selector. And the transmit crystals are in the back. So we have a full set of crystals for this radio. Uh, some of the local repeater frequencies. Uh, so yeah, it doesn't uh, work too bad. It puts out an entire 10 watts and uh, is a FM uh, in transmission. So we'll flip it over and show you the underside. Okay, so here's the underside. We can see the bottom of the uh, Letix switch with the, uh, the bottom of the crystals and the, uh, all the contacts for the switch. And then we have the transmitter section over here with, the, uh, with the, all its components. Over here we have uh, the solid state part, or, or part of the solid state part of the rig. We have the uh, <clears throat> the front end right here, and the IF section is over there. So you can see uh, the old uh, ancient transistors, the OC171s, all germanium transistors. <clears throat> this has not been uh, not been restored, and uh, incredibly, it uh, still works. Usually, those guys uh, start growing little little whiskers inside their cans, uh, but apparently that hasn't happened yet. So. Hopefully it'll last a little while yet. Anyhow, we haven't done anything to this uh, except to give it a little alignment and a tune-up. And uh, original capacitors, original pretty much everything. So uh, the next part of the video will be uh, operational test on the air. Okay, so we got the, uh, the uh, Cambridge flash flashed up here and hooked onto an antenna. I'll just demonstrate the, the LEDX relay and you change channels you can hear the uh, here switch around 
chances up even higher with the already these guys are trying here on on our valley stuff, so give these guys a try here in a minute. The one PYE. Go ahead there, uh, Jason. I, I thought Nelson would keep talking. Go ahead. Yeah, very good. Well, good afternoon to you guys. Just want to jump in and uh, see how you caught me on this uh, rig here. And uh, not too much uh, to report, just walked in the door here, so we just thought we'd uh, jump on and say good uh, good day to you fellas. Hopefully everything's going well. Yeah, go ahead, Nelson, then I'll go back to him before he gets in. Oh, there you go, yeah. Yeah, well, good afternoon, Jason. Good to hear you. I heard the call sign, but it didn't really speak in. <laughs> Who was it? <laughs> So I'll wait a second for somebody else to uh, say something. Yeah, no worries. No, we're just jumping on here just to say good day and uh, just do a little radio check. I'm trying out a really old uh, radio here. Do you copy me all right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I got a good copy on you here, Jason. Yeah, very good. All right, well, thanks. I, uh, I'll put it back over to uh, over back over to Donnie there. All right, so that's pretty much our video for tonight. Uh, thanks everybody for watching, uh, and uh, I'd like to thank uh, Ray uh, V1BFW for uh, reminding me about this rig. It was apparently uh, in his possession at one time, way back in the day. So uh, great to. Uh, uh, hopefully take this uh, little trip down memory lane for him and uh, glad to see that it, uh, <clears throat> that it lives on so with that we'll uh, thanks everybody for watching once again and uh, we'll catch you on the next video